tubal ligation involves blocking the fallopian tubes. When women have this operation done, it's meant to be permanent. But sometimes their circumstances change, like in Deborah's case, and they want to get pregnant again. Fortunately, it's possible to remove the blocked part of the tube and reattach the remaining normal segments of tube. So, in fact, tubal ligation can be reversed. Let's take a look at Deborah's case. Each of her fallopian tubes has been closed in two places to ensure that the ovum and sperm can't meet so she can't become pregnant. In a woman with her fallopian tubes intact, during ovulation, an egg or ovum passes from the ovary into the fallopian tube where it is fertilized by a sperm. The zygote, as the fertilized egg is called, develops for about five days in the fallopian tube and then it is pushed down into the uterus where it attaches to the endometrium and grows to full term. For this surgery, we'll make an incision about three inches long just above Deborah's pubic bone. Then we'll work our way through the pyramidalis muscles and the rectus muscles, carefully separating them to minimize trauma. Once inside the abdominal cavity, we'll find the uterus, the fallopian tubes, and the ovaries. Both of Deborah's fallopian tubes have been blocked by electrocautery. We will cut either side of the damaged section of each tube and reattach the open tubes. This surgery is performed through an open incision using general anesthesia, but it is an outpatient operation, meaning the patient can go home the same day. What makes it possible to do this as outpatient is the use of local anesthesia, which helps keep her comfortable, and adhering to the principles of microsurgery, avoiding any unnecessary trauma, not allowing bleeding to occur, and very gentle tissue handling. All of these things will help the patient feel better immediately after surgery and speed her recovery so she can go home.